Stan Jabalisco, back again, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Uh, I talked uh, in a video a couple of days ago about balanced versus unbalanced transmission lines. In this video, I would like to talk about balanced versus unbalanced antennas and present two common examples of each type, or one common example of each type, I'm sorry. Two common examples altogether. Asymmetrical is another perhaps better term for unbalanced. Maybe even better term would be non-balanced. Symmetrical is a better term for balanced, just as is the case with transmission lines. Well, what do we mean by an unbalanced or asymmetrical antenna. An excellent example of this type of antenna is a ground plane antenna. You've uh, probably used an antenna like this. Generally speaking, it has a quarter wavelength radiating element, although if you put an impedance matching transformer right here at the feed point where the coaxial cable connects, you might make this quarter wavelength radiator some other length shorter with an inductive load uh, device here or longer with a capacitive load device or um, a transmatch you can make it any length you want the radials are always a quarter of a wavelength long so they will act as resonant little resonant antennas sort of in themselves but really they're intended to provide a counterpoise a sort of imitation or fake ground this guy is the kind of system that you would use if the base that is the feed point is a quarter wavelength or more above the ground you connect the center conductor of your coax your coaxial cable to the vertical radiating element and you connect the shield of your coax to the radial system so this is your coaxial cable which then goes to your transmitter or receiver or both transceiver generally a 50 ohm coaxial cable feed line and an antenna like this with horizontal radials presents a purely resistive impedance of about 37 ohms giving you a standing wave ratio of somewhere on the order of 1.4 not 1 to 4 1.4 to 1 or possibly 1.5 to 1 under ideal circumstances not 1 to 1 now to get a 1 to 1 standing wave ratio you can bend these radials down but the basic gist of the concept here is that this system is not symmetrical obviously the uh, circuit that connects to the shield of your coax comprises these four radial wires you might even have five or six or ten you can get away with as few as three or two or if you if you're willing to run one straight down and run the coax out at a right angle from the whole assembly you can get away with only one then you would have a vertical dipole and that would be um, more nearly a symmetrical antenna but we'll get into that a little later in this video the dipole antenna so the vertical uh, radiating element and the four radial wires or spokes or whatever depending on how large the antenna is form an unbalanced system which ideally should be used with an unbalanced transmission line such as coaxial cable. You would not want to use an open wire transmission line with this kind of a system for a couple of reasons. Number one, an open wire line has a much higher characteristic impedance so it wouldn't make a very good match. Secondly, it's never a very good thing to, to connect a balanced transmission line to an unbalanced antenna because that will unbalance the inherent balance in the balanced transmission line. So you would end up without the proper 
phase cancellation in your ladder line if you were to connect that to a vertical antenna like this. Although it has been done, I should note that that kind of arrangement has been done where a, where a ladder line has been connected to a ground plane antenna like this and then the force feeding the antenna on multiple bands. But that's not an ideal arrangement because you'll have some problems with line radiation and pickup as a result of the failure to balance the currents in the ladder line or twin lead or parallel wire line. So that's an, an, an example, a classic example of an unbalanced antenna. Now a classic example of a balanced antenna is a dipole. Let's start that over again. I'm, let's uh, draw the feed line first. I'm, I'm trying to learn how to center these things in the screen, kind of. Make them look a little nicer, if not be more instructive. Now, a half-wave open dipole antenna has a one-quarter wavelength leg on this side and a one-quarter wavelength leg on this side. You get a current distribution that's minimum at the ends and maximum in the center. You can feed that with coaxial cable. It has been done. If you put a balanced to unbalanced transformer right there, a device known as a ballon, B-A-L-U-N, which is a contraction of the words balanced to unbalanced. If you do that, you can have a very good system feeding a dipole like this with coaxial cable. However, if you don't use a ballon, you're probably better off using a parallel wire balanced line because this is a balanced antenna. Note that it's symmetrical. A quarter of a wave on each side, a balanced line. No need for a ballon then in that case. And ideally, when you have a situation like this, where you have a balanced antenna fed by a balanced line, you should try to run the line away from the ant uh, antenna at a 90 degree angle for at least a quarter of, or a, well, preferably at least a half a wavelength, but at the very minimum, at least a quarter of a wavelength. The, and you want to try to make sure to get that antenna well up in the clear so that it's away from ob obstructions such as trees, but more particularly houses or the earth or other things that could unbalance the currents in this antenna. The ideal system would be way up in free space over a flat field such as the kind that we find in much of South Dakota without any vegetation or anything of that sort at all. You can bend these elements down if you bend them down to the same extent so that this angle here and this angle here are the same. Then you have an antenna known as an inverted V. Well, it doesn't have to be exactly a quarter of a wavelength on either side when you feed uh, the antenna with a low loss balanced line such as ladder line. Let's just suppose that uh, you feed that thing with really good high quality ladder line. That's parallel wire line with spacers at intervals, little plastic spacers at intervals. Then uh, the characteristic impedance of such, an, of, of such a line is somewhere on the order of 450 ohms, although it might be as little as 300 or as much as 600 ohms. When you do that, this does not have to be a quarter of a wavelength. The only thing that it needs to be is center fed and symmetrical with respect to its surroundings. And you have a balanced antenna, a balanced transmission line, the best of all worlds, but you are going to need a tuner, a transmatch between this ladder line 
and your radio and then you have a short length of coaxial cable there but the latter line can uh, actually uh, be rather long and at the high frequencies 80 40 60 30 20 meters those frequencies for amateur radio use this is an excellent all band antenna it's a classic and it's an excellent example of a balanced antenna used with a balanced line. Stan Jabalisco, W1GV, saying 73, and so long for now.